So for today, we're going to be looking at the Gar Falcon's Halberk. This is the new exotic for this season, which is season of the plunder. Let me know what you guys think about this exotic in the comments below. I know people are immediately going to tell me that it's busted and needs to get nerfed and whatnot. I don't disagree with you, but let me give you my thoughts about it. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys want to follow me in my social media, I'll links are in the description below. I say this right now because there's a huge portion of people that are actually not subscribed. So if you can do me a favor, subscribe, it's free. If you don't like me later, then you can tell me to fuck off and then unsubscribe or you can be a homie and subscribe. So yeah, thank you. And let's get into it. So from now on, I'm just going to call it the Falcon because if I keep saying the name, it's going to piss me off. So the Falcon is a really good exotic. We're going to be looking at what it actually does. We're going to be reviewing it essentially. And then we'll go to the fashion bit at the end. So if you do just want to see the fashion of it, uh, I should have, the video in segments so just find the segment it should be under the actual name of this exotic and then from there i'll follow the the usual routine but we'll be looking at what it does some of the builds that i've made which is not even builds i just tell you which fragments i'm going to be using with this and from there uh we get into the fashion so again this i'm probably going to start doing this format for either the new exotics or pretty much every exotic that i haven't done yet so let me know what you guys think if you guys want to make if you guys want me to review the exotics let me know um uh, at least when i say review i specifically mean like we'll go through what the exotic does and i give you like maybe a build or i just tell you what the exotic does give you some examples and whatnot like that so let me know what you guys think but for the new exotics i definitely will do this because they're new to everyone not just new new players so again so for the exotic perk for Falcon, it's going to be see me, feel me, your weapon, your weapons gain a bonus to damage briefly after you emerge from being invisible. When you are invisible and defeat a combatant using a finisher, you and your nearby allies gain a reserve overshield and improved class ability region. These reserve overshields can be deployed by using your a class ability. Let's talk about the, the first portion real quick, uh, the bonus damage. Not Nothing too much to say about this. You'll be getting a 15 to 35% bonus damage. I don't remember which one it is. It's probably a 35 in PVE and, and 15 in PVP, maybe, uh, but I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Either, either way, all you have to know is that Arbalist and Lay Monarch apparently can one tap with it. So use that information with what you will. But the main portion to me is the finisher aspect of this because I don't think the finisher aspect will get nerfed because it doesn't need to. It doesn't, you can use finishers in PvP. And the bonus damage will definitely get nerfed, at least in PvP. If it retains a 35% in PvP or PvE, that would be really, really fucking cool, actually. As for the second portion, I'm going to explain it again what it actually does. So essentially, you have to get an enemy down to finisher level. Once they are in finisher level, you go invisible. Doesn't matter which invisibility you use. You can use your melee. You can use uh, a fragment. You can use literally anything as long as you're invisible. Even racking will help. Uh, once you go invisible, you finish them. Once you finish them, you'll see that anything that's around you, even the enemy that you're finishing, becomes volatile. So that's really cool. It actually doesn't explain in the exotic but it only the volatile only works when you're invisible so if you try to do it when you're not invisible nothing will get volatile but once you go invisible and finish something the volatility will happen even even if you can't refresh your overshield which is another thing so once you get that finisher you'll get your your backup overshield which is really cool the thing that you have to realize is that the reserve overshield once you pop it you can't go and get another one immediately. You have to wait until the overshield is expended or the timer runs out. Just be aware of that because if you try to chain it so that way, okay, I'm going to get another overshield so that way it doesn't work that way. Be aware though that once you finish an enemy that will give you the reserve overshield, you'll get your class ability. So most of the time, you might as well use your class ability so that way you can get it back immediately. I mean, you can use your melee if you want, but I just feel like that's wasteful. As for fragments, we're gonna be looking at the first one, which is the most important one, I think. Echo of Obscurity. Finish your final blows, grant invisibility. So having a invisibility on demand that's not attached to an ability is very strong. Just make sure some enemies are in finisher level and you have invisibility. Just be, just remember that if you finish enemies while invisible, 
they do get volatile and depending on if all of the enemies are near you they will all die so just be careful of that but again having invisibility on demand without being attached to an ability is very strong and you're definitely going to want to pair it with this uh to the point where i think high, having high mobility is not even going to be useful because sure having high mobility is really good for getting your dodge back but if you get into the rhythm of finishing enemies and getting your reserve overshield back a lot then the only invisibility you're going to be using a lot is your melee most of the time uh outside of echo of obscurity obviously so i personally will try to have at least at least 90 to 80 or recovery and then whatever else i'll put in mobility because again i don't really need mobility for this build the next fragment is going to be echo of provision this one is damaging targets with grenades grants melee energy the reason i put this one here is because having your grenade or having your melee up would be another great way to have invisibility although i probably would not dedicate a hundred uh, 100 strength to it but i still think melee would be nice to have although you could probably just put gambler's dodge on and forget about it but that's the other one you could use if you don't want to if you don't know what to use and the last one is echo of persistence void buffs applied to you invisibility overshield and devour have increased duration so this one's really cool because it'll actually be using two of the abilities it'll be using invisibility and overshield and having a longer invisibility is going to be really nice so that way you can find an, an enemy faster or just be invisible longer and the overshield is going to be nice because it means you'll be able to be protected longer the only thing that you really can't have is devour and even then you could have, you could have devour with echo of starvation picking up an orb of power grants devour so you could technically go all in with all of the the buffs and debuffs and it'll be wild so yeah that was the falcon i really like this exotic it's definitely one of my favorite exotics so far because i can just see myself using this for years and that's a pretty good exotic in my book so let me know let me know if you guys are going to be using this in the comments below but let's get into the fashion portion which i think is the most important part so so this is the falcon i like how it looks i think the falcon like armor piece looks really cool i love the talons i love the eagle head it all looks really cool falcon head i should say uh it's really cool it's just to me it just kind of looks basic not like boring mm, i don't know simple it looks very simple to be an exotic i guess and it's not a bad thing i definitely love it it looks cool it's just that it's gonna be really annoying to make armor sets with it because of just a few things we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit as for how it shaders it actually shaders really well uh which is surprising because i just was expecting something to not shader well but just be aware that the the cloth is going to be annoying to shader sh uh, cloth uh shadering cloth is usually annoying so just be aware of that i think echo anger looks pretty good with it although it has this brown to it which i'm not the biggest fan of for abyssinian gold it looks pretty cool it's just i'm not the biggest fan of abyssinian gold's like brown plate color never been a big fan and i think sato tribe looks amazing with it but sato tribe is like literally the best shader in the game so that's not saying much as for my example set i only have one i usually make two for one exotic but since we have a review in this video i decided just to make one and technically i don't even have all of my example set so what am i talking about let me let me just show you guys so this is what i have so far and it's like 90 percent done because i am missing the boots and i know you guys are wondering well why didn't you use the boots uh the boots are part of the season pass i think the new armor that we got in the season pass is going to look really good with the with uh with this set specifically the boots so that's unfortunate because i think this looks super cool but with the boots it's gonna look better once i get the season pass armor i'll definitely review it and you'll see this armor set right there so for the helmet we're using the iron truage cask definitely one of my favorite helmets in the game it just looks so menacing and i love it uh for the arms we're using celestial grips this is the only piece from this whole set that i think can be replaced with something else i just haven't found that else thing yet you might see that in the season pass armor review i might actually just make another thing and use other arms we'll see 
for the boots we're using the robo raptor talons specifically because the chest piece is a falcon and the boots have a literal fucking talon on it it just kind of made sense and for the cloak we're using the vernal growth cloak specifically because it has gold on the trim and i just decided to go gold with this look because why not and also because iron truage literally has gold on it so that's my example set i really like it it's definitely cool as fuck but i do think the boots for um, the season pass is going to be a lot better for it and to be quite honest i might actually just switch out the whole set i think the boots are probably going to be the only thing that i'm going to retain from it as in the season pass boots and then i'll probably switch out everything else so we'll see i'm still kind of feeling this chest piece out but the example set that I have, I still think looks really cool. I'm definitely going to be using it until I get those boots. So, yeah, uh, the biggest takeaways I can tell you from this exotic is it's going to be pretty rough because it, it is like 50% plate armor and 50% cloth. So you can go either or you can go full cloth if you want and very minimal plate armor or you can go full, full plate armor and very minimal cloth. It'll look good regardless. My only gripe is i shouldn't even say this but the asymmetry does really bug me but it makes sense why it's asymmetrical it's a literal fucking hawk emblem so it makes sense not hawk a falcon but it makes sense but are you guys liking this exotic let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you guys we will be doing this for the titan and the warlock once i get those things with me and then we'll be reviewing them as well so but yeah let me know what you guys think if you guys want to follow me on my social media outlets links are in the description below thank you all for coming up to this point and i'll see you guys later